you know, you got to take ownership of what's going on in your life. When you're not where you want to be and you say it's because the boss doesn't like you or it's because the girl treated you this way or the guy did this, like all those things, you got to take ownership of them. And if you're blaming uh, all these other external things, you're not going to make any changes and that's going to be a problem. It's then that's the problem too. If you're chronically rejected by people, it's often because of your own insufficiencies. You know, whether that's cowardice or lack of social skills or whatever it is, it's like you can't just brush it off as, oh, well, you know, no one likes me, but really I'm okay. It's like, no, no, wrong. If everyone rejects you, there's probably something wrong and it's probably deep and difficult and it's going to be horrible to fix. And so it's, this isn't a trivial problem. It's not a trivial problem at all. Todd, I'm sorry, all right? I screwed up. I, I know I screwed up. I oh, great, I, of course. Here it comes. You can't keep doing this. You can't keep doing shitty things and then feel bad about yourself like that makes it okay. You need to be better. But yet you're fully committed to sabotaging yourself and your career. Then you're sitting back stressed out and depressed, wondering why. Why ain't things happening? That's the answer. I just gave it to you. It's about as real as it gets. The question is, what are you gonna do next week, two weeks from now? You're in your own way. You are the reason your career is not on the next level. Nobody else but you. When you don't have a true appreciation an acceptance for who you are and you allow yourself to be immobilized by fear what happens in the process is that you begin to abuse yourself you begin to sabotage your life you begin to sabotage your dreams you begin to unconsciously work against yourself you become your own worst enemy so what do you do about that well you you begin to realize that your dream and your gifts have so much meaning and so much value for you until your hunger for them will begin to push you past the fear. Your hunger to have them will give you a special drive. You might be sitting there wondering if you're going to wake up tomorrow and do the thing you said you would, but why on earth would you wonder? This thing you're so uncertain about is literally you. There's nothing in this world you have more control over than yourself. But if you decide to wake up every day, surrender that control to chance i guess you'll be stuck wondering forever this disconnect between you and you is unnecessary though the pattern of hoping you fulfill the role of a better you and disobeying that desire every time is completely in your hands it is a recipe for no self-respect so there's some certainty within yourself that needs to be built that's not going to happen by accident. If you look in the mirror and you ask yourself, what do you have to do to be successful? I promise you, your heart will tell you. You never look at yourself in the mirror and say, you let you die. Until you get to that point, you let you die. You never, you're not brave enough. You want to put it on somebody else. The reason why I'm not successful is because of my boss. Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and said, I'm not getting up on time. I'm not going to work on time. I'm not putting in 120% when I'm at work. I let me down. You always want to blame other people. You always want to, you want to hold other people to the fire, but you're not holding yourself to the fire. You just say you're giving 50%. You owe you an explanation. You owe you an explanation. You need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, why are you only giving 50%? What's wrong with you? You need to put yourself on punishment. You need to tell you no more TV, no more snacks, no more desserts, no more, no, we working out now. No, no more alcohol, not right now. Not, no, I can't handle it right now. You need to tell you that you owe you something. This is you versus you. Most of us, we live in a box. And we don't want to go outside that box at all, ever. Outside that box is all these possibilities of life. But we do is we shackle our mind. We are a prisoner in our own mind. This is all I can do. This is all I'm good at. And we 
we, we take away the possibilities of you could be this, you could be that, yeah. you could be all these things. And I never thought at 300 pounds I could be dang sick. So if my mind was shackled, me and you would never meet. There'd be no book. There'd be no book. There'd be nothing. So what people understand is that they live for themselves, not knowing that you have the power within yourself to change millions of lives yeah. by facing life, by facing yourself. If you're struggling, if you're frustrated with yourself, if you're at that point where you're so sick of yourself and your excuses, I've been there, Steven's been there. This is a normal part of the human experience. And at some point, either the pain is going to get big enough or you're going to bump into somebody's story somewhere on this planet who has been in the position that you're in right now, facing the stuff that you're facing right now, and there is something about their story at this exact moment in time that will ignite something in you that is missing, and what is missing in you right now is hope. If you, you set your own value of what you believe about yourself, if you think that you're worthless, if you're not very good at it, other people pick that up. It doesn't matter what lifestyle you have. It doesn't matter what walk of life you have. No matter what you do, if you allow excuses to tell you what to do, then ultimately the excuses have more control of you than what you have for yourself. So get up, work hard, put some effort into what you want out of life because all you have is you. All you have is what you have inside. Don't wait for somebody to tell you what to do. You know what you need to do. Get out there and get it done. Because that's ultimately what it's going to take. You have to have the courage, the will, and everything you have inside to get to the level and beyond the level you want to be. Life does not stop until they put you in the ground, my friend. A strong mind is a catalyst for change. When you see the best athletes in the world either perform really well or, on the other hand, completely bomb out, it's because of that muscle that lives between the ears. It's interesting to me that the comfortable route is seen as the safest path for the undeniable disappointment that comes from giving up the ideals of the true self. It doesn't seem so safe to me. Don't indulge in the comfort that comes with more effort because that comfort is nothing but a lie. So what kinds of things, what kinds of thoughts are you feeding your consciousness? What kind of things are you putting in your mind that will enable you to either move forward or to justify why you're staying where you are? What really breaks my heart is how stuck people are. And that there are things you can do to change your life for the better. And if you don't have hope, and you don't have this breakthrough where you have for just a millisecond this insight where you go, well, what if things did work out? If you don't have that moment, most people stay so stuck in resignation. So it's time to come face to face with pain. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, how much more can you take? Because what hurt you what, a, what, what tried to cripple you and kill you only made you stronger. You have the capacity to whatever comes up, to handle it, to face it. And rather than feeling powerless, you begin to feel powerful. My content creators, my entrepreneurs, my musicians, come on, my keynote speakers, my captains of industries, my CEOs, from the captain to the cashier, there is more in you. Stay at home father, stay at home mother, lawyer, doctor, hygienist, author, I don't know who you are, where you're from, but there's more in you. You may be hurting, maybe dying on the inside. Still got life left.